Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Lao with Kenchan Crafts, and today is uh, St. Patrick's Day. And so this video, I had a really long day at work, so, um, but I really wanted to uh, do this video and hopefully I can edit it and um, upload it <laughs> before the end of the day. You guys might see this tomorrow, so, um, or on Saturday. Um, but so this will be my St. Patrick's Day, um, plus new pen day video for you guys. Um, but I'm super, super excited to share this with you. Um, so I did get this new pen. This is a Peniter pen. I got this a couple days ago and I did open it and did the usual, you know, new pen uh, maintenance that everyone should be doing with a new pen. Um, as I have learned throughout my, um, time collecting and using fountain pens every time we get a new pen make sure that we um you know one dry write with it just to make sure that it's that it writes smoothly you can tell if a pen is uh, going to be um not smooth or it's going to be scratchy if you test it on good um paper just to have a feel for how it would write um and then secondly, you want to clean out the pen and nib by flushing it with water. And I think uh, you can also use a tiny bit of soap as well um, and mix it in with the water and just flush out the pen completely. This Benighter pen is um, a piston filler. It's internal piston. So I basically had to just hope that there's no soap residues left inside after I cleaned it out. But because I just add a tiny bit of soap there's not um there wouldn't be any um soap left in there uh, after that little soap water um combo flush i flushed it with just basically uh, basic water and then i also tested the nib with waterman serenity blue um i was told and shout out to um iron mike <laughs> um for being uh, wonderful and letting everybody in the fountain pen community know to be using this ink. Um, this ink does have good reviews on being a really good ink to test with your pens and just really well behaving ink in general. So I dipped, just dipped the nib in here and wrote with it and it worked perfectly fine. So, um, yeah, it's really cheap. Get yourself a Waterman Serenity Blue if you, um, are just starting out or if you've been <laughs> in the fountain pen for a while it's a great ink it's cheap there's a lot of it and you can go through all your pen tests with it okay so without further ado let's look into my peniter uh pen and of course it is a green pen and you know just to match with the saint patrick's day theme okay so Peniter box comes with this little envelope here. It's got the um, it's got the warranty information as well as you know, just other information about the pen and how to take care of it. And I did buy this from Italian Pens on eBay for a pretty good price. <laughs> I was really happy about it. Um, and so. This warranty will allow me to, you know, uh, fix any uh, parts of the pen that were faulty or defective by, um, that was, you know, by, not by any fault of mine. So I have to use the pen correctly um, for this warranty to uh, be able to be used. So uh, most of my pens I don't really buy with warranty, but this one came with it, which is just fine. So there you have it. This is my... Peniter La Grande Bellezza Arco. This is the Arco version of the La, their La Grande models. And this is the Desert Beetle. Let me just put this away for now. Just look at that. Is it? I want to make sure it's focused well and not blurry. So this is the Arco because the design on the barrel 
um, they are supposed to be arcs. <laughs> uh, so you can kind of see like it, it arcs from here to here and here you can kind of see too like the white silver part is creating this arc and basically it it's you know the the dis the arc is like like a rippling water or, or like um ripples in the water <laughs> um and i think it's just so gorgeous they these um this Peniter Arco model, um, they they use um, a, a special form of resin um, to and they layer um, they put multiple layers of this silver and green and another like a darker green here, um, layer them together and then pour over resin uh, like another layer of resin to cover the t the very outer part of the pen and so it's claimed that uh, they claim that this um, pen resin is super durable um, and it also kind of mimics or is really uh, reminiscent of celluloid so I don't know exactly how celluloid looks like I've never had a celluloid pen but the chatoyants of this material that they use is just so beautiful. <laughs> I could just look at this outer body of this pen forever. Okay, so on to other um, parts of this pen. So it, it has this quill-shaped um, clip here. Let's see. Yeah, it's, so it's kind of spring-loaded. Um, so it's pretty nice. You can definitely put it in a pocket, a uh, shirt pocket, pretty easily. And here is the Midnighter logo on the cap finial. And then the Midnighter logo on the cap band here. And then it also, <laughs> they have the word, uh, the phrase, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, you know, just etched, etched across this band, uh, cat band here. It's kind of hard to see. I even, like, didn't even notice it at first. Yeah, it's so pretty. I love this silver. I know you guys know I am a gold uh, and rose gold trim um, person but uh, I will go for silver when there is no gold option and I will also go for silver when it looks really good together. So this one definitely does. Um, the end here has the the model number or the limited edition number. So I got 197 out of 888. So only 888 of these pens are made worldwide. Yeah. Um, and then this pen is magnetic cap, so it, uh, it opens and closes by magnet, okay? And it doesn't come off unless, you know, you ha you'll have to put some force into pulling it out, so. The only thing I worry about is that the magnet might, um, wear out over time, but hopefully it won't. <laughs> if it does... Um, I'm hoping that this uh, warranty is lifetime. If it's not lifetime, then uh, let's hope that this magnet doesn't break after the warranty. <laughs> okay. Um, so again, it is a piston filler. So this knob over here does twist and turn for the piston inside to go up and down and fill with ink. Okay. And... The reason why I wanted this Peniter in my collection is for the quill nib. This nib is so beautiful. So it says Peniter. I think it's stamped on there. And this is a fine nib. I wanted the extra fine because the Peniter's quill nib is a semi-flexible nib. So it's very soft. And... Uh, I think this is just a regular plastic feed. It's a 14 karat gold 
flexible quill nib and it's got a little bit of like uh, cuts here so that it allows the nib to be flexible um, the grip section here has a really interesting shape so it kind of like tapers down and then tape uh, it, and then it gets wider again here where I guess where we're supposed to hold it <laughs> um, and then the ink window here it's interesting ink window not my favorite but it's all right um, the grip section I think this pen used to have a metal grip section which I think makes this pen more balanced right now the Arco models or the newer Arco models um, this part is made of resin and it's super light so this pen is very light I measured it it's about 50, uh, like about 17 grams um, so the the feel of it in my hand it's 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 very light it can post and it posts magnetically as well so I am afraid of it falling off because it's 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 not a tight magnet like it can still rotate so I'm afraid of it just like falling off but you do need to be a little bit of force to pull it off but the fact that it posts magnetically is really interesting okay um, I do like my pens to be around like between 20 to 30 grams in weight so like with this the weight is good but because the cap is so heavy it back weights it a little bit so this is going to be interesting for me to write with um, most likely I'll have to write it like this but it's very light that way if you like light pens this one is you know on the light, lighter side unposted okay so I will just do a little comparison of my Paniter Arco model with the rest of my pens in my collection. And you guessed it, I picked out all my green pens <laughs> or some semblance of green. Like my Leonardo looks very green, but it's got a mix of blues and whites and gold in there. My Iguana Blue has some green in there, but it's it leans mostly blue. And then I have the Twisby 580 AL, um, and this one is the Emerald. It's a really pretty color. Okay, let me just take out the rest of these. For my green Galen leather um, pen pouch. <laughs> Everything is mostly green in this video. <laughs> Okay, and then my Lamy Blue Green, right here. Um, this is technically not green, but there's some green in it. My um, uh, Benu Edelweiss, or Benu Talisman Edelweiss. So it's like aqua here, and then like green specks here. My Sailor Pro Gear Slim Blue Green Nebula. It's green. <laughs> Um, for sure, it's very, it, it's green, um, where I'm standing. And then my Platinum Century 3776 in Laurel Green. It's a super dark foresty green. So in this light, it's just like black, but little sh hints of green in there. All right. So capped, <clears throat> let me just line them up. Well, this is a lot of pens to be lining up and comparing. So it's a, it's fairly um, the same size as most of these pens capped. So, um, you know, I, I think it's a nice size. Like, obviously, the Sail Pro Gear Slim and the Kaveco are closer to pocket size pens. And then let's post these pens. Okay, so when posted, you can see that the Lamy All-Star is the longest pen. So, I don't know, you have to have big hands to post this Lamy. Um, I don't post my Lamy's. And um, the second longest posted would be the Paniter, um 
Arco and my Leonardo um, Memento Zero. And then uh, this Twisby 580 Diamond ALR, they do not post, so you'll have to write them unposted, and it, it's a pretty decent size. And um, But yeah, in comparison, posted, it's about the second largest in this set. And then we will, let's see, let's look at them all unposted. Okay, so with them unposted, um, it's relatively the same size as most of these bigger pens. Um, it looks like the Leonardo Memento Zero is actually slightly smaller, so it's it's on par with the Bennu, Lamy, and Twisby. So very very similar to those. So let's uh, we'll just cap these back. Um, this pen, <laughs> um, I think, so the price of this pen is extremely up there. It, I'm um, not going to lie, it is up there. Um, and uh, Atlas Pens did have their Peniter pens on sale. And um, I think the MSRP for this pen is almost $1,000. Um, so... When I held it in my hand, it did not feel like a $1,000 pen, just my personal opinion. <laughs> um, but the the barrel, you know, resin uh, that they use in here um, probably, you know, is makes sense why they priced it so so high. Um, but I feel like if it was a much more balanced pen, uh, if this part was metal again, or if they had added some more weight to the pen section of, you know, this fountain pen and not most of it in the cap, um, it, I would have liked that more, for it to be more balanced. Um, the feel of the pen itself, like the body does feel more plastic than the cap. The cap feels like quality, super high quality resin. The body feels slightly less high quality resin than I expected. Um, mainly because it does have um, resin. These parts are uh, lighter parts of the pen. Um, yeah, so today I wanted to look at some green inks that I have and ink it up and try writing with it. So I've got three, oh no, not three. <laughs> I have four ink bottles right here that are um, green i have more but um i'm actually not going to be using this one i did swatch it because i really this is one of my favorite shimmer inks this is ferris wheel press open sea atrium it's a beautiful beautiful like aqua green uh with gold shimmer but it's super dry and because this is a like a flexi nib, I think that it would be able to write really well with uh, shimmer inks, but um, because it's a piston filler, I didn't want to have to clean out uh, shimmer from a piston filler. P piston fillers are really hard to clean out um, if there is no way for you to disassemble the whole thing. But again, then if you disassemble it, it <laughs> voids the warranty, so what's the point? Of having a warranty if you can't even clean it correctly um, so just don't put shimmer in <laughs> in piston fillers if you can't clean it um, without having to disassemble it so I'm not going to use shimmer in this one so I have these three plus a few other um, samples of green inks and I will show you guys the inks that I thought about putting in here I have already swatched them so well, this one is uh, from my previous video. <laughs> so the first one I have here is Dominant Industry Lake. I got this sample. I've always wanted to try this out because I love teals, turquoise, greens, and you know, uh, and blues, that area of inks. In from where I'm standing, this is green, um, and then there's a, some light blues up here. So to me, this is a medium teal it goes down on paper blue and then it dries to this medium teal it's so cool um so i've only got a sample 
and I definitely am going to buy a new one. Well, not a new one. I'm going to buy a full bottle of this. Um, I think Atlas Stationer might have this, so I will buy from them. Um, and just uh, letting you all know, I am an affiliate now uh, with Atlas Stationers. I think I've made a post um, a week or two ago. But if you guys do go to Atlas Stationers, you can use my uh, code LAO10. Um, it'll be in the description box. Um, and you can get 10% off your whole order um, as long as um, it's not in their last chance section. And there are a few items in their store that um, cannot be, you know, that the coupon cannot be used for, but most everything else you can use that 10% uh, discount code. This is from uh, the other video. So this is Open Sea Atrium. Do you see how pretty that is? <laughs> this swatch looks so magical. Um, so yeah, it is a very, very light uh, seafoam green, I think. And the gold shimmer in there is what makes this ink just, it completes this ink. Um, I think that um, this ink might be a little light um, with or without the shimmer. Um, so if you don't like super light green inks, this is probably not it, but it's a magical ink to paint with or to write with. Um, this next one is Robert Oster, Sydney Darling Harbor. It's it's very dark, uh, so it's like a gray green, but that probably will look good in this pen for sure. Um, and then uh, my other green is the Wearing Ghouls New Hope Crown. I um, saw this, I forgot which YouTuber, um, but I'll, when I find it, I'll, I'll <laughs> put it on here but um so i watched some swatch and she had swatched wearing ghouls new hope crown with um mirror 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 of moraine from ferris wheel press and they looked almost identical um and so now now that i have them both in my collection um new hope crown has more a little bit more yellow and it's also less um less saturated um, it's also a little more muted. So New Hope Crown is more muted. It's got a little more yellow in it. Uh, Mirror Mirror of Moraine has slightly more blue. Um, and it's more vibrant. So I'm not sure which one I like more. I'm leaning more towards Mirror Mirror of Moraine just because I have always loved it. Uh, and it hasn't disappointed me. <laughs> but I have to try this one out a few times just to, before I can really judge it. And then I have the Kobe ink Nunobiki Emerald. It looks turquoise to me. It's like a medium to dark turquoise, but it's an emerald. <laughs> they named it Emerald. Um, I also have the Pilot Eroshizuku Sui Gyoku. This is definitely a teal. It's very green. Uh, it's like a almost a medium dark teal but it's a wet ink it's really pretty uh, really pretty <laughs> I have the next one is Bungu, Bungu Box uh, Tsuyu Hikari or Tsuyu Hikari and it's almost like Chikuren Pilot Hiroshizuku Chikuren it is like a um, a swampy yellow green it's really pretty though Really pretty. I don't typically go for these kind of inks, but I love how it looks. And then I have Pelican Edelstein Jade. I don't know, it's looking green or looking blue in this camera, but it is um, like a, a forest green with a pop of light. So um, it's really pretty. And it also has a red sheen. And then the last one here is Dominant Industry Forest. This is the real forest green. It's just plain, basically, plain and basic forest green ink, but it is also uh, a wet ink. All right, so pretty bottles aside, time to decide which one to match with my new 
St. Patrick's Day, New Pen Day. Okay. So what would make me happiest for this pen to be paired with? Hmm. Okay, so I can rule out some colors that I don't want. So the Kobe Emerald is too turquoise. Um, Sui Gyoku and Jade are so similar. Um, I probably would go with Sui Gyoku over this Jade, so I'm going to put Jade out. Um, and then, again, <laughs> this pretty one has to go in a cheaper pen. Uh, shimmer pen, uh, shimmer inks will go in my cheaper pens. Um, let's see, these two look similar. I think Robert Oster's Sydney Darling Harbor is too dark. But like this pen, it's got these nice dark green spots that would go just fine with the darker ink. But I don't think I will find joy in writing with the darker green ink. Dominant Industry Forest, I feel like this one is very dark, but it can also write very light. So the shading might be really interesting with Dama Industry Forest. Um, this is an interesting pairing. Um, you wouldn't expect it, but it, it might look good. This one seems like a pairing that would match. I definitely want to use Diamond Industry Lake just because, I mean, the swatch kind of shows all the kinds of blues and greens that you can get from this ink. It's so fascinating. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera, but like there's definitely lighter shades here. That's where the green is. And then there's a like darker teals beneath it. It's a really pretty green uh, blue ink. Okay. Yeah. Sadly, I only have a sample of Lake. So I'm not even sure if I can fill it up correctly. I'm going to quickly put this in a vial, a bigger vial, <laughs> so I can fill it up. All right, here we go. Definitely cannot get that big of a fill, but I'm going to go with this and we will do a test. Okay. All right. So let's do a, a writing sample. This is a, some call it a soft, soft fine nib. Oh, I should put a blotting paper in there so I can probably write more straight. <laughs> All right. Or this grid line in here. Um, it's, it's nice without, um, the pen posted. Let's see how it feels posted. Yeah, it's definitely very back weighted. I don't really like that. And the pen almost feels like it's curved, and I don't really like that feeling. 
Um, let's see, the quick ground fox. Jumps over the lazy dog. All right. So yeah, the ink probably kind of looks very blue on camera, but um, to the naked eye, it's like it it's changing to a greenish color. Um, and I do like this blue as well. But it's probably not the not the best uh, ink pairing, especially on St. Patrick's Day. This is not really a green. Um, let's look at the line variation. So this is no pressure. This is some pressure. So it can go from like an extra fine to medium. And the way I'm writing, it, it looks like a medium to me anyways. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm putting a little bit of pressure there. Um, yeah, there is really nice line variation for sure. Um, but again, I'm not really good at flexing pens and I don't want to really flex it. So I think that the, um, size of my writing with this nib will be between a fine and a medium. So this nib is very bouncy, as you can see me writing there. And it, it, it flexes like, no, let me, let me go back. You can kind of see. Yeah, look at how that nib, <laughs> it's bouncing. It's really cool. Um, so I don't have a nib that bounces this much. Um, I do have other nibs that are soft, but this is the bounciest nib I have, um, and it's so cool. I also really, really love the way this color looks um, on paper, so for sure I'm getting this ink bottle. Um, yeah, so if if you like Aurora Borealis, this is a lighter version of Aurora, Aurora Borealis. Um, it's a medium teal. Aurora Borealis is kind of like a a deeper teal. Um, I was expecting lake to be more turquoise, but it's teal and absolutely love it. <laughs> okay. Well, there is my new pen. Um, again, I'll just let you guys have another last look at that before I end this video. Super pretty pen, beautiful nib very new experience to my collection very happy with it um so i would consider this a grail pen <laughs> just because it's so up there but i didn't really spend a grail pen price on this <laughs> so um again look for sales look for good deals um anywhere you can um if you can't find it then support your favorite uh, store. Um, I think that's it for this video and I will be planning on joining the community and doing my eight question pen video soon so be on the lookout for that uh, but until that video I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much for watching my video with me. Leave a like and a comment down below uh, if you enjoyed the time with me here and let me know how you spent your St. Patrick's Day. So yeah, thank you again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!